Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Queen Taramina's on Orient Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Neighborhood Television. This week we got a, um, another coach in our coaching carousel here for OAA Now. We got the coach of the Rochester Falcons, Coach Eric Vernon. Coach, thank you for joining us this week. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate uh, appreciate what you do, and the more eyes on OA football, the better. Um, when you look at Rochester last year, people look at this team, and um, you know, last year you guys went three and six. Um, recap last season in your eyes. Sure. You know, last year we were a really young football team. The year before, you know, we had one of the best teams the school has ever had, and it was a very senior laden team. Um, so we knew last year coming in we were going to be pretty young, and we played hard. You know, we had a couple games where the last, you know, we, we kind of gave it away in the fourth quarter. We played Southfield pretty hard at our place. Um, and, you know, some games uh, were, were, you know, we just made too many mistakes. I kind of attribute it a little bit to the youth that we had. Um, but I think that, you know, unfortunately with that youth last year, it didn't work out so well for us. Again, we played hard, just made a lot of mistakes. But good news is we got a lot of guys coming back this year ready to contribute and have a little bit better season for sure. Um, talk about that game um, at, at, and um, two years ago, that playoff game against Stony Creek. I know a lot of people look at that game as like, you know, that's your first ever win. I mean, the first ever win in postseason win in school history. So talk about that game from two years ago, if you can. Yeah, that was that, you know, that was really a, a, a great group of senior football players who, you know, we talk all off season, just like every other school does. We talk all off season about putting the work in. So that way, when you get that opportunity and get that moment, you can you can thrive and shine. And shine. And you know, we had some really good playmakers. Alex Bueno, who's playing up at Michigan Tech right now. Uh, Grant Calcagno, who's over at Michigan State. Uh, those two guys really, you know, made a great play at the end of the game. But the whole group, the whole team, to be able to get the ball back with just a short amount of time left, and then drive down for that last second win really was uh i mean it was awesome it was it was one of the best moments i've ever been a part of um and it was just a testament to how kid, how hard the kids work they never quit they never gave up um and it was a good it was a good thing for obviously for our program and for our school it was uh it was an awesome experience i'm really proud for those kids to have that opportunity and you were down 14 nothing that game i mean like i remember that i mean like i watched that game on youtube i know that we'll talk about that youtube page in a couple minutes but um but um, how were you feeling like when you were down fourteen nothing? You know what I mean in that game. Well, I tell you, it's crazy because we just two weeks or maybe even three weeks prior to that we played Stony and they just they whooped us up and down the field. And so, you know, we were able again testament to our kids. You know, a lot of it was we weren't quite in our run fits. We didn't do the things that we were doing normally. Um, we talked about hey, if we do this, good things are going to happen for us. And we had a little bit of bad luck at the start of the game, but we got down and again testament to to the guys the seniors we have they didn't quit they're like all right we fixed it we got this um and we were able to find some some matchups that worked for us and we were able to play pretty solid all the way through and just again that group and kind of that tenacity that we've kind of been building over the years with the program kind of shown through and that never quit attitude and that rock tough football um and it was it was great it was awesome and it was a good testament to the like i said the seniors at that time and it was, uh, it was, it was, it was certainly a fun moment. Now let's now let's go from that game. Let's talk about this year's team. I mean, obviously, you look at you guys, a lot of experience coming back. Um, name me some impact players for um, you guys coming into the year and um, heading into the year for you guys. For sure, yeah. So we have uh, we have our running back and linebacker coming back, Jack Lauer. He was an all region running back last year. He was an all state wrestler for me. Um, took fifth in the state at two fifteen. He's a he's a truck. He's a tank. And, uh, you know, last year was his first year playing running back. We needed him back there. Didn't have one fumble all season. Um, scored tons of touchdowns. Just runs the ball hard. He's coming back on both sides. Um, we got Zach Davis, who was our leading tackler last year and our, our tight end. Uh, he's coming back for us. Provides us a lot of experience, again, on both sides of the ball. Uh, Curtis Adair was our quarterback last year. Um, and he was young as a junior is one of his first couple of years of actually playing quarterback and struggled with turnovers a little bit last year, but really is a playmaker for us. And he's going to find ways to get the ball um, that way uh, up front. Really, we're getting a kid named Adam Glinsky, who was a wrestler for me. We're getting him back. 
Um, and he was a all league lineman for us. He's played guard defensive line for us. We got a couple other kids too, that I'm looking to have some pretty big leaps and bounds. You know, you know, one thing I think that I really love about this school and, you know, is I know a lot of other schools have it, but I think what's really special about this place is how all the coaches in this building embrace multi-sport athletes. Obviously, I coach wrestling as well on top of it, so I get a lot of my football players who uh, who wrestle, you know, Coach Avola with basketball, Coach Majera with baseball, and really all the coaches here really in, in, in embrace and impress upon the kids the importance of playing multi-sports. So, you know, I got a lot of kids that have played not just football, but been doing a lot of things on a lot of different fields here and they're they're ready to, to contribute and kind of excited. Got a lot of guys coming back that I have a lot of high hope for. So um talk about Jake Tandy. I mean like um obviously he played um for you guys last year. I think he was a wide receiver for you guys. Um talk about what he brings to you, to the table. Actually you know what Jake Tandy did not play you know he he didn't end up playing this past year. He's one kid unfortunately that um ended up playing just basketball this past year. Um, he would be a returner back, but he, he decided he wanted to concentrate on basketball. And that's why we have his younger brother. He's going to play quarterback, a sophomore in the program, and he throws the ball really well. Um, but he was one kid, unfortunately, where last year he was he did not play for us. So, um, How's the um, receiving game? How's the um, passing attack for you guys? So we're working on it. You know, I got uh, we got a lot of good, skilled kids at the wide receivers, uh, right receiver spot. We got Quentin Hatchett. Um, he's coming back from last year. Um, he's had a good season, good camp year as well. He's a big, strong receiver. Uh, we got Jacob Scott, who's a good baseball player. Um, he's coming back, and he was he was the guy that got some varsity reps as a sophomore last year. Um, Henry Fontelon, he, uh, he's a receiver that we have coming back that's also going to be my kicker, and he's a really good kicker for us. Um, and like I said, Zach Davis as our tight end. He's going to be a unique weapon. He's, he was a good lacrosse player this past spring. Um, so he's a pretty athletic kid and, uh, he's one of our leading receivers coming back. And so, and like I said, with Curtis Adair, he played quarterback for us last year, but he's also probably one of our best receivers. So we're going to find a way to get him the ball, both at quarterback, running back receiver. Um, so those, those guys, you know, they got a lot to prove because we didn't throw the ball particularly well last year. But there's a lot that goes into it. Um, you know, we didn't protect particularly well. And so we got some things to prove in the passing game wise. We definitely, you know, we, we kind of earned our money last year with, with running the ball. You know, in, our, in the three wins we have, I, we maybe completed one pass in those three wins. So we have to obviously get a lot better in the passing game. And we've been working hard at it this summer. So, um, Let's talk about your defense. I mean, obviously, um, defense, you know what I mean? You know, defense is always important to win championships, I view it. Um, talk about your defensive line. You know, let's start with your defensive line, and we'll go from linebacker and defensive secondary. Sure, yeah. So we got, we got Adam Glinsky coming back. Um, and like I said, he was an all league player for us. He was a wrestler for me. He's a very explosive kid, strong. He's the strongest kid we got in the weight room. Um, works really hard. Uh, I have a kid named Seth Payne who were really, he was a heavyweight for me this past year. He's going into his senior year, got some reps last year. Um, but really looking back, um, you know, to this year, coming back this year and he's really looking forward to a big year for us. Uh, a kid named Antonio Abro is coming back at end for us. Um, he's also my starting guard. Uh, and then we have a kid we call AK Anthony Christmas. I can never get his last name right. We call him AK. Uh, he was my starting offensive tackle. Came back, slimmed down athletic, got pretty quick this year. We're looking forward for the big things from him um, up front. So we got a lot of depth, and that's the good news. And we got a lot of guys that we can rotate in. We have a kid named Marcus Adam, who was a freshman last year that we moved up as a freshman, played against Harper Woods, played against Southfield, did really well. He's coming back as a sophomore. He'll be on varsity playing D-line for us, and he's a, he's a strong, explosive kid. So I'm, I'm excited to see what he does in his second year as a sophomore for us. So we got depth. We got guys we can rotate through. So that's exciting. Um, what about the linebacker and the secondary spots? You know what I mean? That's going to be key for you. I know we talked about Lauer already, but any impact players in the linebacker and the secondary spots? Yeah, so Jack Jack will be Jack will be the guy at that middle backer spot. Um, and you got Zach Davis coming back. Zach Davis is actually our returning tackler. Uh, you know, we're not sure he might he played inside backer for us last year. We might move him to the outside um, because we got another kid named Tristan Hyatt who played was a starting tight end, one of my tight ends last year for us. Uh, wrestled for me as well. Um, Going to come in. He could play some linebacker. Um, Emilio Marquez was a starting outside linebacker for us. Uh, he played 
as a junior. So he's coming back with experience. So again, we'll have depth there. I got a lot of young kids coming up too um, from the JV team that can play. Uh, DB, we got got some question marks at DB. We lost the you know of the of the guys we lost. We lost a couple defensive backs. We're getting uh, we're didn't getting Devin Grabke back. Uh, his older brother played for me a couple years ago. Um, he was our starting corner last year. It was injured in a couple games, but he's. I'm looking forward to him to having a breakout year at, at both that and, and a little running back position as well. Um, but then a couple more, the other corner spot and some of our safety spots are up for grabs. And so we're looking for, for some guys to step up. So that's something we're definitely, we'll definitely try and do this summer is find depth there. Name me a newcomer that OA nation needs to know about heading into the year. I know you guys, you got, you guys got some, um, ex- I mean, you got some questions at the secondary and the wide receiver spots. So name me an X factor for, um, that OI Nation needs to know about? Oh, that's a great question. You know, like I said, I think uh, I think Seth Payne as one of my defensive linemen, wrestled heavyweight for me. He didn't get a lot of reps last year, but he's 6'3", 265, big athletic, strong kid, good leverage. Um, really looking forward to seeing what he can do for us. Um, and, you know, we're trying to find, uh, like I said, we got Curtis Adair who played quarterback. We're going to find him a ball. We're going to find a way to get him the ball. But we got some other options at quarterback. I got a, I got a young kid coming in who's going to be a freshman. His name's Matt Dykey. Uh Played for the, the Rochester Raiders program last year. He's a very, very talented kid. Um, he's had a really good summer. So we're actually pretty excited to see what he can do. And uh, another quarterback, Brody Wilcox, he was, uh, he was on our, a sophomore last year for us. He'll be a junior uh, baseball kid. And he's been having a good camp. So, some one of those one of those three guys have to step up at quarterback for us, and uh, they have a lot. Each of them have their own skills, their own unique talent sets, and it's just a matter of us as coaches finding ways to to maximize and utilize them. So, um, let's talk your schedule now. Obviously, you look at the schedule this year; it's a little bit, it's a tougher schedule. I mean, like you guys open up the we're gonna go non conference first before we talk the division. Um, let's you guys open up with Frazier. Of course, Frazier. You know, there's a history here with them. Um, Frazier, obviously, Steve Norgrove, um, a former assistant for the boys, I mean, under the girls' basketball team, um, now is the boys' basketball coach at Frazier. Um, you will guys open up with Frazier. Of course, Frazier's the team that knocked Troy out of the playoffs 20 to 19 on a final play. So, how did that come up for you guys opening up the year with Frazier? Well, you know, we're always trying to look. You know, I, I love playing. Obviously, our OAA league is so tough. And, you know, we try to find people out of the league. I love playing Mac. I love playing a lot of those schools and trying to find someone. It was, you know, at Division One. Now, unfortunately, I think they bumped down to D2. They're like one student away. Um, but we know that Frazier is a program that's always going to get wins. They're always got talented kids. Um, I know they had a really good year a couple years ago. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what they got coming back, but I know they got good coaches who traditionally compete. And like I said, they beat Troy last year too. I think last week of the year, knocked them out of the playoffs, like you said. And so they're going to be, it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a good, good one for us to start with um, to kind of see where we're at. Cause then we get into league play and I know you'll go through that. It's going to be, you know, whether it's our crossover games or the OAA white, it's a tough, it's a tough schedule. It's a tough slate of games for sure. And then let's talk Wall Lake Northern. I mean, week nine, you guys play the Knights of Wall Lake Northern. I mean, they, I mean, like last year, you guys got them. Um, talk about playing them. I mean, in week nine. Yeah. So they're again looking for looking for D one teams with with way the playoffs work. And you know, last year they had a new coach, and you know, we were able to come. They, you know, they came here, and I think our kids were ready. We were able to run the ball really well, very physical up front. They had a couple of really good playmakers. Um, I think they got a new coach. I think the coach they had stepped down. They got a new coach. So I'm not 100% positive, um, you know, what they got coming back coaching wise. Obviously, week nine we'll we'll be have some some weeks of film on them. Um, but you know, always very some Wall Lake schools, Rochester schools, always very similar. Um, and they're gonna have they're gonna have good players. They're gonna have, you know, they had some talent on the lower levels when we played them last year. So that'll be a good way, hopefully, for us to to end the season and and hopefully, you know, see where we're at at that point. Let's look at your crossovers. You got Berkeley week eight going to Hurley. Um, what is your thought process, you know, playing against Berkeley? I know it's their pink game. I know for that one week, week eight. Yeah. That's, you know, I love going to Hurley field. That's uh, that kind of community field. That's pretty cool atmosphere. They always, they have great, great support, great community support. So that's a fun game. That's we played there a couple of times and we've really, it's just, an, it's, uh, you know, that's the thing about the OAA. A lot of times, wherever you go, it's a great, it's a community game. It's a community football game. And it's, 
you're going to have great crowds. And that's one thing there um, that we're looking forward to is an opportunity to go play there. And they're tough. They're always a tough team. And we've, we've always, they've always battled us and it's always been really tough games with them. And uh, again, that's a, that's a good crossroad. It'll be a fun experience for our kids to go down there and, and play at that field and, and play in that atmosphere. And then let's talk your homecoming opponent this year. It's Oxford. I'm going like, I'm going, this should be very interesting. You guys playing the cats week. Um, I think week five over at home. So talk about that matchup with Oxford. Yeah. You know, sometimes you want to get your, your homecoming game. You want to find someone that, you know, is not that any game's easy, but we have to, the way the schedule works, we're stuck playing Oxford and that's going to be, you know, that, that, I'm looking forward to that game. You know, we went up to their place a couple of years ago and, and played them tough. And unfortunately, you know, we weren't, uh, didn't come away with the victory, but this year I know they got a lot of talent coming back coach line up there. I mean, they just do such, they're just tough kids, hard-nosed kids. That's going to be a good litmus test to see kind of where we're at toughness-wise, which, um, you know, they're, they got, again, they're going to have talent. They're well-coached. Um, that's going to be a tough game where it's, <laughs> as like I said, there's no weeks off when you're playing in the OAA. And uh, and that crossover, it's going to be fine. The one thing, too, about Rochester, this community at this school, we have some of, we have just an amazing cheer squad, amazing band, it is a Friday night lights experience that it is, it's going to be a great atmosphere. It's going to be a raucous crowd. It's going to be one of those games that you're going to want to come to because it's going to be, it's going to be a great atmosphere. I'm going to talk about the community impact. Um, after I talk the schedule, I mean, obviously there's one game in particular I want to talk about and it's this year's Falcon frenzy game for you guys, where you guys are taking on Rochester Adams, um, a team that, Historically, it's been a long time. I mean, 19, I mean, you guys have known about this. It's been since 1996. It's the last time that um Rochester beat Adams. So, and this is your Falcon Frenzy game. So I'm looking at the schedule. I'm going like, why are you playing them in your Falcon Frenzy game? I mean, like, why? This is not an easy match for you guys. Talk about <laughs> talk about how this occurred. Well, you know, first of all, I think the big thing is that Falcon Frenzy. That's that's a community event too, right? And that's. You know, even though we're all competitors here in Rochester with Adams and Stoney, we're all still one district. And, you know, we do a lot of crossover, even educational. I'm a teacher, so we work, you know, I work pretty closely with teachers over there at Adams who are coaches as well. And so, like, there is a rivalry, but it is a community event. And we want everybody in the Rochester community to come in to Rochester Stadium, come into this, this atmosphere, and just enjoy it. And, of course, yeah, it's a tough game, but again, you know, every game, you know, every, every one on our schedule is a, is a, is a tough team. So, but that's just, I think that's a unique opportunity for us to, to be able to have the biggest impact in the community by inviting our, our neighbors from the Adams district over and, and playing them. And it's been, obviously, like you talked about it, we've, we've, we've had some struggles over the years, but it, we've had some, you know, we've had some real close games, you know, we've had some bad luck go our way, unfortunately. And a couple of years ago, we had them in, in double overtime and, and dropped the game winning pass and, in the playoff game two years ago against them, you know, we were up at halftime and up at the end of the third quarter and, you know, we just couldn't quite close it out. And so we've had some really tough games with them and uh, we're really looking forward to the challenge this year. We really are. Our kids are excited for it. Um, just like every year they are, but uh, we're looking forward to it for sure. Let's look at the white, obviously your divisional games. I mean, like, obviously you guys, um, let's talk about the divisional rivals. You guys see A&T um, going on the road to Southfield Arts and Tech. So talk about A&T in your eyes. I mean, I mean, like in your, in your, in your eyes with A&T. You know, they're going to be, honestly, I don't think I'm saying anything that people are going to question. I think they're going to be they're They kind of got a wild card about them. They got a new coaching staff, obviously, and it'll be, they had an amazing, an amazing run last year with tons of talented seniors they lost a lot, but I'm at Southfield, so I know they got a lot coming back. And um, I'm sure, you know, I, the new coach they got, he's got tons of football experience, and he's going to have those guys ready to play. Um, so it'll be interesting to see kind of what they do in the first couple weeks, right, acclimating to a new coaching staff and, and, and getting themselves ready. But going to Southfield is never an easy game for sure. Um, and so, you know, it's one of those things where they'll have talent, and it's, uh, it's going to be a good challenge for our guys to – to come out and try to do the things we do well and, and, and match and try to find ways to match up with them. Talk about Groves. Obviously, um, they're going to be a very interesting matchup for you guys. Um, talk about the the, um, the um, Falcons of Groves. Yeah, you know, I, that's kind of become a little, I and mean, you told Coach Flaherty over there, that's going to, that's kind of turned into a nice little rivalry game between us. Um, there's been a couple years where we've gotten them. Uh, they obviously, last year, they, they 
they they they beat us really bad. But we've always played them pretty competitively. Whether well, there's been a couple of years where we've beat them, they beat us. It's uh pretty try to kind of similar styles, right? We both play both play a lot of cover three, a lot of four four. We both like to run power, run counter, um, and it's just a physical brand of football and. Um, you know, last year, like I said, we went out to their place and we got, we got stomped down pretty good. Hopefully this year we come back and again, find some matchups that work up for us. And I know obviously they got some really good players coming back. They always do. They're really well coached. And that's one of those good old fashioned football games. We're going to have to strap it up and ready to hit. Talk about the rivalry with Harper Woods. I mean, last year when Harper Woods entered in the league, I'm two years ago when they entered in the league, you guys beat them at your place. And then last year they got you back at Harper Woods. So talk about that rivalry with Harper Woods. Yeah, that's no, that's a fun game because they got a lot of athletes. They got a lot of dudes. It's an opportunity for us to kind of challenge ourselves. Uh, I know they got a lot of good guys coming back. Um, but like I said, a couple years ago, they came up here and it, uh, we were able to get them down to their place and they, they took it to us. You know, I thought we offensively moved the ball pretty well, some turnovers, but defensively really struggled with their speed and their skill guys. So, um, hopefully, you know, we talked about earlier, we can kind of shore up a little bit of our questions marks we have in the defensive backfield and, uh, and can, and, you know, they come up to our place and hopefully we can, uh, find again, find the matchups that work for us and, and it'll be a physical game. They're always a well-skilled physical team. Coach Owen does a great job with their guys, gets them ready to play. So that'll be, it'll be a fun atmosphere. And then talk Stony Creek. I mean, you, um, Stony Creek, new coaching staff and, um, coach Powell taking over there, um, What's your thought process seeing Stony Creek um, on the schedule? Yeah, it's it again community, right? Like we get work with a lot of very closely with a lot of those guys over there, a lot of those teachers and the kids over there, and you know I know Coach Powell, he's done a fantastic job as an assistant everywhere he goes, so I'm sure he's going to do an awesome job as a head coach. Um, and it'll be interesting to see. You know, we'll get a couple of weeks of film on them and see what they're what they're doing, but I'm pretty sure just based on his history, they're going to play hard and they're going to be a well coached team, and so. Again, looking forward to that challenge. I think we're their homecoming game. I think they schedule us for homecoming. And so, you know, sometimes that's one of those things as a team, you kind of like that because you want to try to spoil that opportunity for them. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's got, there's they got talent over there. I know they got a really talented couple classes coming through. And like I said, these teams are always well coached, at least as an assistant. So looking forward to seeing what they got. Talk about program strength. I mean, obviously your sub varsity, your middle school levels, and then of course the youth levels. Um, talk about talk about that if you can, coach. Sure. You know, I think you know we've been here for a while. I think when we took the program over, um, you know, we weren't very good. We were one of the worst. I, you know, it was one of the worst programs in the state. I think we've done a really good job as a coaching staff building this program up. Uh, I've had a lot of continuity with coaches. We've kept the same coaches on staff for a really long time. Um, and I think, you know, lower level wise, I think 2020, the COVID year was kind of a turning point for us. We kind of made a decision where we were going to blend our JV and varsity programs together. We're going to let our JV kids be coached by varsity coaches. We're going to utilize that fifth quarter that the state allows and let a lot of those kids get opportunities to play in varsity games. And, you know, in 2020, the COVID year, we won the league. Then we finished the following year in second and we finished the following year in second. And then last year, you know, we kind of had a little bit of a down year, but I think that, COVID year was really a turning point for us. And when we started kind of changing some of our processes and what we did, and our numbers are stronger than they've ever been. We got over 130 kids in the program. Um, and so, you know, that's one of those things. I mean, I, I could dress anywhere to 70 to 75 kids on Friday night this year. Um, and we got a lot of guys, and a lot of depth and that helps us out quite a bit. And we really embrace multi-sport athletes. And so that's something where, um, you know, that's, that's helped us with our numbers. Like I'm not trying to fight with other coaches to get kids as long as they're doing there. And we talk as coaches, Hey, he's doing this workout. He's doing that workout. As long as I know they're doing something, you know, that, that's something that's really benefited our program. And so numbers are good. I think the strength of our program is, is the fact that we have such high numbers. That's, you know, having over 130 kids in the program is by far the most we've had since I've been here. Um, and then the buy-in too, right? Like when I first started, we'd have workouts, we'd get 15, 20 kids this morning. We had over 90 kids at our workout today. So, um, it's just, uh, we've come a long ways kids. It's a testament to the kids that are here, the kids that have come before them, they bought into this culture. And, you know, I, I, I think we're really, I think we're doing well as a program. You know, obviously there's still things middle school wise, um, you'd like to see do to kind of build that up, but you know, that's something we're continuing to work on. I just had a youth camp last week and, 
you know, a couple of years ago, I had a youth camp. I think we had eight kids show up this year. We had over a hundred. So, uh, that, you know, that future's bright there as well, working our way, getting into our youth, getting into our elementary schools and, and building that up. So excited for it, excited for this year and for the upcoming years as well. Let's now talk about the community aspect of it. I mean, we talked earlier, um, you guys got, um, a couple themes. I mean, like for your home games this year, um, can you break down those themes this year for me, please? And for what? No, I'm sorry. I, the I mean, theme, I kind of go. The um, community themes. I mean, obviously, you guys got the Falcon Frenzy game with Adams. You got Homecoming with the Moxford. I think you got Youth Appreciation Night um, with Frazier. Um, talk about that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, for sure. So I, I would say this. Like, I've been blessed these last couple of years with some of the best administration that you could ever ask for. Their supporters have always had great principals, have always supported the program. Um, but even just recently, Mr. Wrinkle right now is our, as the principal, he, he loves the whole community aspect of what football brings and what this environment can, what the band contributes to the culture, what the cheerleaders contribute to the culture and other sports as well. And our athletic director, Dean Allen, um, does an awesome job and they really want it to be an event. And, and so, you know, we have a lot of things on the calendar. We have a lot of things on the schedule. The first one starting with hall of fame night and, um, bringing in a lot of former athletes, bringing in a lot of alumni. You know, we always like to take, we always like to talk about, you know, Rochester 1883 was established first school. There's tons of history. And I got a lot of guys in the program right now whose parents and grandparents played at Rochester. And so that history there is something that we really embrace. And, and so the culture and the history is something that we really want to send out to the community. So whether it is a hall of fame night or a youth night, you know, it, it is a community event. And, the band, such an amazing supporters in the band, the cheer program, got the best peer cheer program in the state. You know, that's something that all of that contributes to our Friday nights. And it, you know, it's, it's, it's something that's special. And I know obviously being Lake Orion, they got their Friday nights are special. I think that's what's so cool about football here and in this area is that community aspect and that community event. And we're always looking for something new to do. You know, we've done teacher appreciation night over the years. You know, youth appreciation night. We've done first responders appreciation night. Um, so we've done a lot of things where we try to get that community involvement because we think that's something that's so special here in this city. Um, talk about, of course, the, um, the uniforms. I mean, obviously, um, I know Rochester has been famous for the um, for the blue R, um, obviously. So talk about any change to uniforms this year at Rochester. So, you know, it's funny because uh, – <laughs> I know you always bring up a couple years ago, we went with, I think, the white helmets and you always let me know how big of a mistake that was. And that was because we're, we're, we're Royal blue all the way. We're Royal blue and white. And we got the same Royal blue helmets with the, with the black R that we have. We're going to keep the same uniforms. We got some pretty cool uniform combinations. We were blessed and had a, had a nice donation from parent the program a couple years ago where we got, you know, we got our blues, we got our whites, we got uh, we got a special red, white, and blue uniform that we like to bring out on, you know, first responders nights. We got a black uniform that we like to to bring out as well. So we were very gen we very generously received a donation um, from a parent and program who was able to hook us up with that. And so um, so we're going with those same same themes again. And for each game, we might change up what we have, but the traditional royal blue. Royal blue helmets, royal blue jersey, royal blue pants is what our main theme is going to be going forward this year. Um, I do want to talk about that Falcon. On I know I I don't know if you um go on YouTube a lot. You know what I mean? Like, and you see like the Rochester Falcon like talking and all that. I mean, like any inside information on that on that Falcon on the um, on the high school uh, on the high school Twitter on the high school um YouTube page. <laughs> I'll be honest, with you, I have no idea. That's that I have no idea. I have to look that up because I don't know. I don't know anything about that. So. I don't, I'll have to, I'll have to look that up when we get off here. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link on that. I'll send you the okay. link. You know what I mean? I okay. think that's very interesting. I mean, like, you know, I'll show you the link on that, but, um, okay. Yeah. Please do. Cause I, yeah, please do. Yeah. That, yeah I'm not, I'm not curious to see what that's all about. Yeah. I would love to see that too. You know what I mean? I'd be very curious to see that. Um, one final, um, final thought before I let you go coach. Um, what is your expectations this year for Rochester heading into the year? Um, I know you talk about the team that made the playoffs a couple years ago. Um, what is your expectation this year and what is it going to take for Rochester to get back into the playoffs? You know what I mean? Do some historic things this year with this team. 
Sure. No, I appreciate that. So I, obviously our expectation every year and our goals every year, we got to, we got to, we talk, we say we got to run the rock. In other words, we got to beat Adams. We got to beat Stoney, our rivals. We want to win our league. Um, we obviously want to make playoffs. And I, I think if you're a high school football team and your ultimate goal isn't to be playing at Ford field, then you're probably doing something wrong. So that's obviously our goal. That's something we strive for. Um, and you know, for us, a lot of it is making sure that we take care of the football and do the things that we do. And, uh, that's going to be run the football. It's going to take care of the football, play great defense and, uh, and get our, get the ball in our playmakers hands. And so, you know, if we can do those things and we can stay healthy, um, like I said, I think depth is going to be one of our, one of our, one of our strengths, you know, like I said, we can dress 75 kids on a Friday night. We're going to have the opportunity to have a lot of guys contribute to this. And a lot of guys on all sides of the ball, be able to make contributions. I think that's only going to help us out, you know, and, I always say this, you're only good as your senior class, and I got a great group of seniors coming back, a large chunk of those guys who played last year, looking forward to having great years this year. So um, you know, that's kind of what we're looking for, and just like everybody else, we're optimistic, right? We're looking forward to it, and the big thing is we got to stay healthy and have a little bit of luck, and I think we'll have a pretty good year. And when you look at, of course, the Soldiers of Fortune, the um, your student section, um, talk about how um, they've impacted your team. I tell you, we get such great fan support. It's you know, it's it's one of those things where, again, in this school, it's a special place. I kind of I kind of think sometimes as a teacher and a coach, I live in a little fairy tale where I have just this great this great community, this great culture of of just support from all levels. And you know, we as a football program love to support other sports, other extracurricular activities as well. They support us back, and it really is just a great community. And our soldiers of fortune, they do a great job of showing up on Friday nights not just home games, but away games as well. Um, and they really appreciate, I think, how hard our kids play. And we certainly have, uh, it's one of those things where we appreciate the fan support and the community support and the support we get from everybody. So, Rochester coach Eric Ver- Vernon, I'm thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. I cannot wait to be at your place for media day in two weeks over at Rochester yes, High School. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for all you do. Thank you really much. I'll see you in two weeks. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, Rochester coach Eric Vernon here on the podcast this week here. We're talking Rochester football here. Um, when you look at the storyline with Rochester, and I think this is going to be interesting to see here how, you know, when you talk Rochester, you really look at some, you know, you really look at the opportunity with this team. I mean, there is a lot of opportunity when you look at this team heading into the year. Um when you look at the division, the matchups, and I looked at the schedule, obviously we talked about the Adams, um, talked about Adams. Um, when you look at that matchup, and I think this is going to be really, really interesting. Um, as I mentioned, they haven't won, they haven't beaten Adams since 1996. And I think that's going to be really, really interesting to see how that one goes, especially in the, um, in that matchup. It'll be a good matchup. I think it'll be a really Really interesting matchup to see how this one goes. And I think it's going to be, it'll be more interesting to see how, you know, this matchup goes with, with, um, Roch- with Rochester and Adams this year. I mean, Adams last year, I mean, they did lose, they lost Brady Prescorn, um, but Adams returns the quarterback and Ryan Waters. They got Leonard Tillerson at running back. Um, so, It'll be interesting. It'll be really, really interesting. Um, that week two matchup, their home opener for Rochester against Rochester Adams. Um, that should be really interesting there. Um, I but I think the most critical game for them is gonna be the Frazier game. Because, you know, last season this team got off to a um they had a really tough 21, 20, 21, 2, 21 loss to um Utica, and that was a really, really tough one. Um, and you know, I, I didn't think they, they were the same after that game. I mean, they, I mean, they were competitive against A&T, but I just didn't think that, you know, they were the same team after that game. And you really look at with, with them, I mean, you know, I'm looking at the schedule. I'm studying a schedule here, um, more and more in depth. Um, you got to look at. You know, you, you look at that Frazier game, you know, obviously with them beating Troy last year, um, you know that 
they're going to be scrappy. You know they're going to be competitive. And I think it's going to be an interesting matchup. I think it'll be a really, really interesting matchup um, in that one week one. Um, but I think that's the game that they have to win is that Frazier game. Because that could tell everything, everything heading into the season is can this team bounce back, have a really good year? They got a lot of depth, which is going to be good. You're going to need depth, especially in the white, because you're going up against teams like like Groves. We know Groves got a lot of experience coming back. Talking to Coach Flirty last week. Um, and then, of course, there's Harper Woods. Harper Woods, to me, looks scary. They look scary. On paper, you know what I mean? You do. You have a proven quarterback in Ryan Walsh, though. You have Dakota Garriott on the outside. You got a lot of proven athletes. Harper Woods, in my opinion, and I'll be honest with you, I think they're better than they were last year. And last year's team won the D4 State Championship. Um, now, Harper Woods' schedule is tough. I mean, they open up the year. It's a tricky matchup for Red Union in week one. Um... And then week two, they got to go to Oxford. That's going to be a really tough match for them. And then week three, no by Detroit Catholic Central. That's not going to be an easy slate for Coach Rob Oden. Then you have Stony Creek. Obviously, we know the rivalry there. Um, you know, I know how talked about the community. Um, we know how, um, you know, they bring both. I mean, like, I know Rochester brings bands over there to um, to um, Stony Creek and Adams. and. You know, and obviously, you know, that should be a really interesting matchup um, between Stony Creek and Rochester. I mean, obviously, you look at that matchup and, you know, you've got to get the line edge in that one too, Stony Creek, I think. Um, but skill position, I think, is going to be very interesting. I'm very curious to see how this team does the quarterback. I mean, I was talking to Coach Vernon. Um, he's got three guys there at quarterback um, who can make some noise this year. So, we'll see how that goes. I mean, we will see how that goes, um, and we'll see what happens there in that matchup. I mean, I think that's a very, very interesting matchup. I mean, like, between Stony Creek and Rochester. And, Rochester. and then there's a and I mean, a and um, Curious to see how Coach um, Chris McKenzie, or Curtis McKenzie's going to look with a and It's a brand new team over there. So, they're the great unknown. We don't know much about them. Um, you know, and for for a and you know, that's going to be interesting to see. Really interesting. I mean, but we don't know what they have. We don't know what they have. I think that Oxford game for them is going to be interesting because Jack Lauer against Luke Johnson. Battle of the running backs. That should be a fun matchup. Should be a really fun matchup. Um. And then you have um, Berkeley at Hurley. I mean, uh, I know Berk. I think that's Berkeley. That's Berkeley's pink out game. Which I'm curious to see the matchup between um, Coach Humes and Coach Vernon. I think the that coaching matchup that's gonna be a fun matchup. Be a really really fun matchup to see how that one goes. And then they call out the year Wild Lake Northern, and that's gonna be an interesting matchup with the Knights. It'll be really interesting. Um, I think it'll be interesting. I mean, you know, when you look at Rochester, um, you know, I think program strength for them is on the rise. Um, and I think they're going to be, you know, talking Coach Vernon, I think they're going to be very good. I think it'll be good. Playoffs is going to be interesting because this was a team two years ago that went in the playoffs, knocked off Stony Creek, knocked off, um, you know, had a tough loss to Rochester Adams. Um, prior to that, the last time they made the playoffs was 2010. And we know how that, and we know they had that run. So, you know, Rochester's has had some years where they've been up and down. But I think this team can make some noise this year. And I think for them, the key for them to having a good year is knocking off their arch rivals. Knocking off Adams and knocking off Stoney. That'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. Because I think with Rochester, you know, the key, I think this is a this is a sleeping giant. I think this is a sleeping giant, you know, that's ready to rise. That's how I view Rochester. Because they've seen the success Adams has had. 
been to the state finals, won a state title. Stony Creek, they had a deep playoff run. Um, in um twenty one and twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one and twenty um twenty nineteen twenty twenty had a deep playoff run. Um, been um been the postseason the last couple of years. So for Rochester, there's a lot of I gotta prove myself here, and I think Coach Vernon said it best. This is a team that's got to go in and prove themselves. If they can go in and prove themselves, um, then this team. I think could make some serious noise. I mean, they got the talent to do it. They got the experience to do it. And, you know, this is a team that I think could could make some noise. Could they surprise people in the division? I mean, they could. They could make some noise. They could make some noise. And I think this is going to be a team where I think with Rochester, um, you know, if things go right, they stay healthy. Um, I think this is a playoff team. I think they could be a playoff team. Um, so when I look at it, and I'm looking at it from the um from the preview from the only now preview um you know we do the um preview show coming up in a couple weeks um when I talk to um you know we break down Rochester I'm gonna say right now that the concerns I have with this team obviously looks to be in the defensive secondary um but also you know. I they got some questions. I think I think up front's their strengths. Um, quarterback now becomes a concern for me uh, when I look at Rochester. Quarterback becomes a concern. I like the community aspect, you know, of Rochester. I like what they've done with the community aspect. Um, some really interesting games on the docket. Um, you know, especially when you look at their home games. Um, you know, obviously, um, when I look at that schedule, um, and that schedule is absolutely brutal. When you look at their home schedule, especially, looks brutal because, you know, playing Groves, playing Harper Woods, playing Oxford, playing Adams, not, and that's not counting Frazier, but looking at that schedule, it looks daunting. It seriously looks daunting. And, you know, those are four games that I think I could see them having some issues. I really do. I mean, as I mentioned earlier with Adams, that could be a trap game. That could be a trouble game. Oxford, that could be a trap game. Um, Groves, um, that could be very interesting because, you know, the coaching battle there, that's going to be interesting to see. And then there's Harper Woods. Obviously, we know how that um, game's gone. So, we'll see what happens. I mean, like, I think Rochester, they could surprise some people. I mean, they could surprise some people. And then when you look at their schedule on the road, you know, obviously Stony Creek. Um, last year, Stony Creek winning the Rochester and just throttled them 35-7. I mean, you got to look at, but, you know, Stony Creek's a completely different team now with um, Coach Rick Powell taking over that team. Um, A and T, you know, going down there, you know, going down the ten mile and Lost. That's always a tough trip for anybody. Um, Wall Lake Northern, you know, new coach over there. That should be really interesting. You know, it'll be very interesting to see. And then Berkeley, going to Hurley Field. Berkeley, to me, I think's the key to can this team, you know. Forget about last year. Because last year for Berkeley was a complete disaster for them. It was a complete disaster. Now you got a new coach in there, new staff in there. Um, You got to, they completely changed everything over there. Um, They got a new field, um, new everything, you know? So when I look at that game week eight, that's going to be a really interesting matchup because Rocha, because Rocha, because I think Berkeley is going to be improved in that division. Um, now, when I look at that division in the um, goal, I think, I still think Avondale has the, um, is going to have the edge in this division. Um, then you have Ferndale, um, Ferndale with coach Eric Royal. 
they're much improved, I think. But when I look at the question marks for um, Ferndale this year, and I wish I had Coach Eric Royal on this podcast. I mean, like, because I've had him before. Um, reached out to him a couple times. Um, but haven't heard back. Um, I think Ferndale, to me, is probably the biggest wild card in this division because they got athletes. The concern I have for Coach Royal is in his team is depth. Um, that is a big question mark I have with them. Um, and then you look at Royal Oak. Royal Oak, um, going to be an improved team. I mean, I think Royal Oak's an improved team under Coach um, Colin Campbell. I think he's got that program back in the right track. Um, but like I said, I got some questions with Royal Oak. Um, can this team, you know, keep growing? And, you know, and I think that'll be something to, um, talk about what coach Colin Campbell is, you know, you look at Royal Oak and I think this team, you know, two years ago, you know, a lot of people look at this team and like, you know, he thought they could make the next, the next path. I mean, like, you know, they had a very good experienced team really didn't work out. Um, didn't materialize. Um, then last season, you know, they bounced back, had a nice year. Um, you know, despite not getting the postseason, but they had some good wins. I mean, they knocked out Berkeley last I mean, like, they knocked out Berkeley, um, had that tough one-point loss to Troy Athens in overtime. Um, so I think Royal Oak, if they... But with me with Royal Oak, it comes down for me is offensive. Um, is offensive. Is they found an identity defensively. They just got to find it offensively. Is can, this, can Royal Oak step up offensively especially against teams that have more superior talent than them. They got to score. That's really bottom line. When I look at Royal Oak, they got to score. Um, Pontiac, I talked to Coach Jefferson um, on the podcast. Um, you know, and I think Pontiac's a team that could surprise some people. I mean, they could really surprise some people. I mean, their last postseason appearance was in 2011. I'm not counting the 2020 year because of the pandemic. Um... But Pontiac, I think, could make some noise. I mean, their schedule's tough enough, but I think Coach Jefferson's got that team in the right direction. Um, so I really think Pontiac, they could surprise some people. They could really, really surprise some people in that division. They could. They could. Um, then you look at, then you look at, um, you know, Berkeley. And then we talk Berkeley here on the pod already. I think this team, if they can develop an identity, um, get that mindset, you know, that revenge tour mindset that they have, um, they could surprise some people. I think Berkeley could surprise some people. But when I look at that division right now from my own eyes, early, Avondale right now in the gold probably has the advantage because of the experience they got coming back, because of the talent they got coming back. The only concern I have with them is their quarterback situation. It's the only concern I have with them. But right now, if I had to rank everybody in the blue right now, um, these aren't my official projections. But I would have to say right now in the gold, I'd say Avondale, um, Ferndale, um, Berkeley, Royal Oak, Pontiac. But if, but who knows? If Berkeley could surprise some people, you know, if Royal Oak could surprise some people, um. You know, Royal Oak, I think it's going to come down to is can they find a way to, um, can they find a way to, um, you know, to turn it around? I mean, can they find a way to get up that next step? You know, I mean, that's the next step I have for Coach Colin Campbell is can they make that next step? Pontiac, I think they're on the way up. I really do. So it's going to be key for Berkeley to really find out where they're at heading into the year. So we'll see what happens. Um, Obviously, in the white, this is where Rochester was at, um, is in right now. When I look at this division right now, I still think Harper Woods is the team of the team of the crop in this division because of I just think who they got coming back. Now, people with growth are going to say, "Well, wait a minute, what about us here?" I mean, I just think I'm just I'm concerned about the quarterback situation at Groves. Um, you know, they got they got the experience, they got the pieces to make some noise. Um, but when I look at Harper Woods, um, obviously, 
Yeah, they're the defending Division Four state champions. They got a really tough night conference. Um, but when I look at that division, it's going to come down to is Ken, you know, Gro Harper Woods has to go to Groves this year. So that's going to be the key there in that matchup. That'll be really interesting how that one goes. Um, I would say Stony Creek right now has a little bit of an edge over Rochester considering what happened last year. Now you have the new coaching change over there at Stony Creek. Um, so there's some question marks there, but I think with Stony Creek, it's going to come down to is the playmakers. Can their playmakers, especially quarterback, that's the key for them. Rochester, they got experience. That helps. That helps in the situation. But when I talk to Coach Vernon today, I'm a little concerned about the secondary. I'm a little concerned about that. Um, you know, I'm a little concerned about the um, quarterback situation there. Um, but I think Rochester could be in line for a nice year. It's going to come down to is, you know, with Rochester is, what does Coach Vernon do at quarterback? That's the big question. That is the big, big question mark when I look at Rochester. Um, then there's a and I mean, the great unknown. Um, a and when I look at this team, they could, they could surprise some people, but a lot of people right now in the media are counting this team out for a couple reasons. And I think for a couple reasons why is because, you know, you lost all that talent. You got a new coach in there. Um, you got to replace the quarterback. You got to replace. There's a lot of question marks with A&T. There is. When I look at that division, and I think with a and it's going to come down to is can, um, can they keep up what they've been doing? I'm a little concerned about their week one situation. Um, I will be very curious to see if a and found a week one yet. Because that is the big concern I have with a and Because they're a division one school. And I'm a little surprised that teams have not stepped up the plate and say, you know, let's play the defending Division One state champions. Because when I look at that schedule right now, week two, they play Clarkston. And that's a difficult matchup for them. Considering Clarkson's got a lot coming back. You got the Bowman Twins there. Um, defense to me is a concern for them. Um, along with quarterback. But I think for a and they got a lot of... I mean, their strength right now looks to be in the wide receivers and also up front. I mean, that's what I'm looking at with a and When I look at their roster, um, who they got coming back, I mean, they've just got to address the quarterback spot. I mean, they got the rushing attack. They got the secondary. They got, they're got they going to have athletes over there at South. They're going to have athletes. But I think the question for me is going to be with them is going to be is can this team, you know, with the whole new different lineup, um, replicate the same success that they had last year. Now, are they going to be like last year's team? No. But there's still an opportunity for a and, a and t to say, you know what? You know, we can prove to ourselves that last year wasn't a joke. You know what I mean? Like, or everything, and you know, when he won a state championship, last year wasn't a joke. That we can, we can do our own journey. Yes, it's a whole new era for this team it's a whole new era but it doesn't it doesn't excuse them from winning games it really doesn't i mean they can make some noise i mean a t can make some noise you know last year the d1 state championship team that was something special for them that was something special i mean but they had a lot of senior experience anytime you lose 16 starters you know that's gonna be that's going to say a lot so you don't have a lot of experience coming back. But there's a chance for this team, they have a lot to prove. And say, well, you know what? This team, you know, we're right in our own story. So that's my take on A&T. Is they're writing their own story with the new coach. Can this team, you know, try to replicate that same success? That last year's team had. That's the question I have with a &T. So my take in the white right now. 
I would have to say Harper Woods right now is the best team in this division for a lot of reasons. Then I would say Groves right now. Then Stony Creek. Then Rochester. And then A&T. A&T, I just don't know what I'm expecting from. I just don't know. I just don't know what I'm expecting from. There's a lot of questions with a and A lot of questions. So, we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, that's my early indication of each division. You know, I've got the blue and the, um, no, sorry, I got the red and the, when I look at the red, um, the red, you know, you got to give West Boomby the early edge, especially with the experience they got coming back. Lake Orion's in that conversation. Clarkson's got to be in there. Adams has to be in there. Oxford has to be in there. As I said last week, when I talked to Coach Justin Pintar, I think all five teams have a chance to make the playoffs. I think all five teams will get in the playoffs. And I really believe that. Oxford's got a murderous row with schedule. Their non-conference is brutal. Lake Orient's non-conference is brutal. Clarkson, they got, their schedule's brutal. I mean, you know, they, I mean, like, especially their week one. I mean, I mean, Adams, they got Romeo week one. That should be really interesting. And then... And then you have um, West Bloomby, Chippewa Valley. I mean, Lake Ori, Northville. You got Oxford, Utica, Eisenhower. So that's going to be interesting. That division could be really crazy. I think that division could be really crazy. And in the blue, it's anyone. It's anyone's pick. It's basically like a game of like, you can play like, um, you can play like, um, you play like game of darts. And like, you know what I mean? All si- seven of those teams in that division got a chance to win the division. Um, right now, if I had to pick a team right now that I would have to say barely fav- is favored right now, I would say Farmington because who they got back. North Farmington's got a good case. Oak Park's got a good case. Um, Seaholm lost a lot from last year. Bloompia Hills, I don't know much about them. Um, so... It would be really interesting to see how, um, and then you look at, um, you know, and then, of course, you look at, um, you know, Troy, I mean, like Troy and Troy Athens. I mean, Troy Athens, you know, I got an idea what they have. Troy, I talked to Coach Chris Frazier next week on the podcast, so we'll talk about the Colts. But I think Troy could be a player, especially with their um, non-conference um, being um, amped up, especially having to play Lake Orion and Notre Dame prep. Those are going to be really interesting matchups. But when I look at it right now, what I have to give when it looks at the non-conference schedule or like right now, if I had to pick a team right now in the blue, my early edge would have to go to Farmington because of who they got coming back. They were in the white last year. You bring all that experience from the white to the blue. Um, but I think North Farmington, Oak Park, and Troy might have some saves. In this division. I think they're going to have some strong saves. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Well, those are my early indications when I look at the divisions heading into the season. I mean, like, I'll have more in depth as the um, weeks come along. So, we'll see what happens. Remember, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaway for this at yahoo.com. Um, next week, of course, as mentioned, we have Coach Chris Frazier here on the podcast. Um, um, if... Um, if coaches um, want to reach out to me to be on this podcast, um, I mean, I'm easy to find. I mean, like, I got your um, easy to find. So we'll see what happens going forward. Remember to sign off here. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. Take care. And I'll see you next week. God bless all. God bless. You.